Hello, welcome back. So maybe you can tell me, cause I couldn't figure out how to save it on to like the old way. But there was an option for me to either delete the video or download the video, or save it on an IGTV, which I use IGTV. Anyhow, <laughs> maybe Instagram realizes too many people are doing live these days, right? Cause I. I barely slept on time, like <laughs> most nights watching live. Um, hi there, thank you for coming back. Hi, hi. Now, <laughs> for those who just joined, we're doing the demonstration for flourishing. Um, I want to point out something important when you do a descender stroke. So, let's look at here. We have, so in a bit, we have, for example, in your lower cases, you have alphabet G. We talked about this previously, but let's recap. Okay, so that's a G. Should be a little bit thicker. You have. J. The G, this is slightly not so open. Okay. In the Engrosser script, like for example in the scenario menu, you find the descender loop who has this little shade here. Now, I just recently discovered someone explained the reason behind the shade um the funny story was this is what i totally invented in my mind um is maybe in the past when you know people publish scenario menu i thought when they add the shade is because maybe they have a shaky hairline when they go up so they will add that little shade so that it helps to cover up uh, and maybe that was how it all started and um I mean, that was just in my head. But what I learned recently, which is very, very interesting, it's how when we do lower cases, we want to lead our eyes back to the X height area, which is the where the flower area is. This is your X height, right? This is your X height. And currently, this X height is a 5mm uh, uh, X height. Now, the idea is you want to go down descend the loop and by adding the shade here it leads your eye back to the center point now what I also notice that this part when it's getting thin right this is the thin area you you adding the shade so let me try to think about logically so you have getting thinner here so you can technically fit a triangle i always say you fit a triangle right here what it represents is at this point the top of the triangle you're starting to reduce pressure so this is again the moment when your 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 index finger and your brain is talking to each other and trying to communicate so i would do one okay so if we do a y been talking for a bit the ink dry up I cut down the pressure here then I'll come up following the loop and exit and following traditional method, I'll add the shade here very lightly so that the shade will lead your eyes back up to where the X height is. And it's a sign of like, it's just rep uh, balancing. Now, the reason why I start doing the descender um, alphabets here is because I want to show you that for G, J, and Y, for example, you notice this? 
the sh the shaded area is the loop. It's this shade, this shape. Sorry. So you have a shade. You taper out here. Okay. So slightly more open. Now this shape. It's a teardrop that you have this pretty much on the 55 degree slant. Okay, and on this side, it go on to slant until here it turn a bit. And then this go like that. Okay. Now this is very different from a Z or letter Z. When we do a letter Z, that's the first stroke. You have this. It <laughs> looks kind of awkward, isn't it? It looks like a little hunchback. <laughs> But this is the way it right or you can have a little bit more oval okay i think maybe i make it such a big gap here it looks slightly awkward let me retry writing it Yeah, maybe I come up. Yeah, this is better. Sorry, I think <laughs> this looks like a hunchback. <laughs> because the exit stroke was way too far away. I should have brought it closer like that, maybe. Okay, just ignore this. Sorry, I don't write letter Z or Z often enough. And that's the truth. I don't practice enough and not study detailed enough. Now here... What could it be better is the gradation of pressure. So it's thin, thicker in the center, back to thin. You come up and out. Okay, now I'm trying to redo the bottom part because it shows you. Yeah, thank you for laughing at that joke. It's quite funny. Um, <laughs> The bottom part is a teardrop. That looks more like an almond, right? So instead of coming down straight on the slant, it's a curve. And it come up as a curve. Of course, it is still on the slant when you hit the center. Cola. Sorry, my dog, right here. Okay, so this is the midpoint that is touching the slant. Okay, now this is back back to basic. If you like this kind of um, information, May is exactly what I'm planning to do. It's all the classic style um, and try to be more Go a little bit more nerdy about all the details now we're flourishing we will just add the pressure and then add pressure and coming out with a lovely big um, s curve this s letter s you can see quite clearly Notice this is curve and this is curve, a big almond shape there. Now, you can also add your own little oval like that as well. It is, this is not on your practice paper. This is quite simple, but the idea is you have the train track the parallel 
spacing throughout. Right, one more time. You can fill and down. Skip through the wet ink if you want. And come out lightly. Uh, this time I make it more even. Do you see the difference here? This one, a little bit more space. This is a little bit narrower. I think I prefer this. Because this is me trying to make it super light parallel, but in a way this looks quite natural. Mm. Very subtle difference. Okay, now the next one. It's also two, I think two of those, you draw this and come here. You can lift because if I keep going, sometimes I make it super thick as soon as I go down. So I would like to stop here because then my, my brain have a second to tell my index finger. What I would do is starting light at pressure, back to light, up at pressure and follow the line. Now this is an horizontal oval. Okay, this is the axis. Of course, you have all your ovals here. Okay, these are all the hidden ovals. Okay, the next one, up, down, loop, you lift, Start thin, thicker, back to thin. S curve. This is just as slow as possible because the ink is so wet right there. Press and loop and lift. Thin, adding pressure. Down, upper legs. Down. Upper legs, out, and like that. If you think this curve is not oval enough, you can touch up on the edge. Just add a one thin hairline, which makes it a little bit more um, curved out. Bloop, I want to say, but it's more curved out, right? Now the next one, same pattern as your Y, okay? It's just muscle memories you start to remember. The same curve and up. Okay, I bring it higher, you can bring it. This is the same as what happened just now, but with like a P. Because that part here, this descender looks like a letter P, isn't it? You sometimes you can also, what you can try, oops. I'm holding the paper <laughs> uh, because of the camera. Now, what you can try is lift, you can make a loop and go out. Can be quite pretty. Many variations. Okay, you can come here and suddenly change of direction like that. Now, this is the difference is this is no little loops here. This is just, sorry, I, I shouldn't touch up so, so much. I'll make it. Okay, hopefully you should see.
yeah sudden change of direction now again this I skip the top part but you, can, you should write the top as well like that to be quite pretty all these uh, variations so I'm gonna let you you can screenshot this if you want but I'm definitely gonna take photos and put it on my IG uh, story okay so you can do a loop bring it over with the tiny loop you can have no loop like a sudden change of direction I like using this when um, I have uh, if I have a I have the descender alphabet as the first letter of a word because then I can bring some flourishing onto the left hand side okay now the last one so I'm holding the paper up <laughs> and pushing the paper higher so you can write I may have to change the angle okay can you see not really oops sorry okay I'm here that's fine now up press and loop For same thing bring over add pressure by manipulating your nip slightly more to your right angle okay you can apply this You can be your letter Y. Sorry, <laughs> quite a funky one because there's a big gap. I will write again. Like that. I say that this is not so great because it's so close to the baseline. It really hurts when we rush. I do that a lot. When I'm rushing, all the problems or all the <laughs> little problems coming out. No rushing. Take our time. Manipulate. And coming. Still quite high. Ideally, I hit right below here, okay? Um, let's try one more time. That's better. Yeah. I think when you're practicing, even with the copy sheets, I want you to keep thinking after writing one alphabet, look back and see, okay, what could have been done uh, a bit better uh, before keep moving on. That's how you learn to improve. Um, if you ask me some um, tips on how to study, especially nowadays, we all have a lot more time, especially in Hong Kong. I feel like we have a lot of public holidays and <laughs> I I recently yesterday have a one of a, 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 a student she came up and she bought some calligraphy supplies and then I I thought I recognized her face and um, and she told me that she came to take a class with me about I think it was about four or five years ago because um, that was that long time ago and I was so happy to see that she wanted to write again because she said oh, I've got plenty of time nowadays and I think that's great because now we all have time but when we are practicing it is extremely important if your goal is to improve I think most people would think of think of wanting to improve okay rather than just uh, writing for for complete leisure I think a lot of you want to get better and it is just a nature uh, of human being want to be like competitive in a way in a good way you want to be better than you know than before so what I suggest you to write when you're practicing with these copy sheet every time write one criticize look at it what is good what is bad 
What do you like about the alphabets? How you can be better? Um, even slowly migrate to just using the guide paper, which is provided. Um, you can print it off just the guide page with no, uh, no, the shaded or traceable alphabets here, and just practice your own. Once you start to memorize all the sequence of the strokes and stuff, definitely recommend you to, uh, you know, use a guide sheet and practice because then you can really train your mind of memory on your muscles uh, also your muscle memory as well okay now I think I've talked enough and we have covered amazingly all the alphabets from A to Z uh, for lower cases we did last month the capitals and um, so uh, before I go I'm happy to write a few words in flourishing style let me grab this paper and now since we have covered all the alphabets if you would like me to um, write any word do let me know I'm using walnut ink just using walnut ink uh, walnut ink is um, a brown uh, color ink because it's made of walnut and I usually use walnut crystal which you can buy from uh, paper and ink arts and you get a big jug and uh, you can mix your own water ink you can also buy the tom wait what is the name of it tom let me grab it Ugh. so that is oh yeah tom norton so this is another small bottle very cute right so this is all water ink brown color um i like to make it a bit darker so i can see it clearly uh, what else? Do you have questions? What ink do I use? Um, I think that's it. Okay, now let's see if we can write a few words. Okay, you have any suggestion? Oh wow, yes I do. Okay, Jonathan. Okay, let's do Jonathan. Okay, now usually I suggest for uh, when you're practicing, it is quite beneficial that you write out the words that you want to write in Flourish in just simple handwriting. Now, the reason I do lower cases rather than capitals is because that helps you visually point out immediately which alphabet is potentially where you can add Flourish. Um, my suggestion is for more of a beginner because I understand not everyone can immediately go really, really fancy. Uh, the aim is just to start off something nice with lovely flourishing. And if we're looking at this word right now, you can see the T and the H has the ascender, meaning that there are potential, uh, you know, adding flourishing, and if you follow before, T and H can be joined together, which I can show you. And then, obviously, O and A, because they all fit in the X height, you want to avoid adding flourishing, because when the alphabet sits on the X height, you don't want to add anything. Now, N, you can do, like, uh, a nice exiting flourish to finish off. And letter J, usually, um, letter J... I will write, okay, so I will use this space here, and hopefully you can see. And the ink run off, dried up, that's okay. Okay, this is a very simple J, but by adding this, it's quite interesting. Oh, when I do flourishing, also what I suggest you to do, let, let's restart because I should remember this from my demo. Okay, sorry. <laughs> now this is a better way, is using a blank paper and your guide paper, clip them together. Give me two seconds. Because using a guide paper to practice directly sometimes is too many lines for when you're writing the whole word, I would say. Especially when I demonstrate. 
you can't see too well. Okay, let's do it here. Now you can see I'm using the guide paper. I'm using uh, a practice blank paper on top and you can still see the guideline. Okay, so I'll start with that. I can make a loop here. Okay, that's a J. Now, also because I like to bounce up and down tiny little bit to give it a sense of movement. Jonathan, right? So A. J-O-N-A-T-H-A-N T You can make a lovely big S curve and bring it down like that I can try I don't know if this works but I can bring this to fill up some space here okay now when I come up I usually probably would not do anything because uh, it's gonna crash onto this flourish right so I will maybe bring it back up And just make a big okay now this is quite angular which I don't really like and what I can try to do there are a few things I would touch up as well I'll touch up here to make it smoother light touch up here Okay, to make this smoother, I could possibly add a shade here. So you move by following the curve. This is slightly tricky because the the corner you see is quite po pokey, pokey or how do you say, like quite sharp. Um, if the the this is lower is better because I can cover it. But let's start if I cover from here and see. Okay. Sometimes it's quite dangerous because it can mess up the writing. Now, that's okay. I think this is the whole thing that I did. Um, one thing I don't like is this. I was going up too steep. Now, the oval here, it's at this angle this slant right so if i have made it further in a horizontal oval it will look better so the idea is flatten it so you have an n and you bring it flatter and then i can so this is the shaded and don't be afraid to use pencil or just like ball pen to practice because it's a lot easier. Do you see the difference? This is like quite pointy. And this oval, it's horizontal. Sorry, it's horizontal. It's a little bit lower. Okay, well, mm, it also, also look quite big, right? But then if I want to rewrite this, I make this a little bit more dramatic. You know, even bigger to balance on this side. Maybe that's too big. You just have to play around. But I think 
by really doing that and criticizing, as in judging your writing, you can learn uh, how to develop an eye for it. Now, one thing I also noticed is this two lines could have been, if you want, you can um, cross them. Uh, bear with me. Let me try. To, do you do you, uh, a rubber eraser? Oh, thank you. Okay, so I have an eraser here. I think this is dry. Okay, I shouldn't mess this up. But I want to show you with a pencil first. Okay, and somehow you can overlap them. Yeah, just use your pencil, figure out something. Then you can overlap this. This is quite big now. You can make this quite big. You see what I'm trying to do? Learning from your writing. Um, if this is too hard to read, you can get a light tracing paper or, you know, a thinner paper like a Tomo River, which is very light. Uh, thin weight we can put it on top so you can see through let's see if this paper works okay yes it kind of show right so this is what I will redo Make it bigger, and then this I want to keep. Overlap, keeping it flatter. Wow. Okay. Maybe like that. Mm. Then you can, you know, play with your, your nib and pen again. But studying it first. Notice this is the train track, the intersection. Make sure we, when they intersect, you want to keep it like a cross. Okay, cross. Okay. I'll write one more. It's almost 10 p.m. here. But this is just the start of my evening. <laughs> I'm like a vampire. I hardly sleep these days. I think yesterday now I slept at 3 um, a.m. There's just so many things to do at night. Oh, wow. I have... Oh, okay. I saw the word outstanding. So I don't know whether you want me to write outstanding. <laughs> I hope that was the comment. But outstanding. Okay, maybe I can write that. What do you use to darken your Warner ink? Oh, to darken the Warner ink, you can buy Warner ink crystal, which I don't sell them, but you can get it from Paper and Ink Arts. Um, I think John News Bookstore may sell them as well. I, I'm sure they do. Uh, it's a Warner crystal that you can darken by just adding uh, some in your existing, existing uh, Warner ink. If you want to make it a little bit darker and you don't have honor in crystal, you can also use a tiny like drop, a few drops of sumi ink, the black sumi. Because I know in America that's quite popular, sumi ink. It's actually originated from Japan. Um, sumi is S-U-M-I, sumi ink. It comes with black, it also has um, gold colors, white colors. Now, gold and white, I do not recommend. Really don't recommend. It's very watery. Well, maybe I use some uh, bad ones, but I don't like it. But I like the black one. I also like the orange one. They call it, uh, I think, what is the English word? from? from I, I don't know how to pronounce it. It always sounds like a, a vampire. <laughs> Vermont? Uh, sorry. Yeah, but it's an orange sumi ink. I don't know how to pronounce that. I'm sorry. Um, okay, maybe I'll write the word outstanding then. 
That's my son who's graduating from college. I practice this for his card. Oh my god. I will write this and I'll send it to you. Let me write down your IG name. D A N I D U R O. Oops. H. Sorry, I just quickly dropped it down. I will write this and I will privately message you. <laughs> and I hope he graduate from the college uh, happily. Yeah. Oh, uh, my 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 friend found it. Vermonly, V E R M I L I O N. Oh, Vermilion, something like that. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, I do have Sumi. Good. Yes, at the tiny drop, not too much because it can make a whole bottle of water in black very quickly. Always little, try little. Yes, thank you. Fumon, fum, fumilian. <laughs> Great. Now I'm gonna do outstanding because that was shown on my IG. So uh, I will write outstanding. Okay. Oh. So again, if you're practicing. You write out the big O, sorry. Standing. Just simple. Childlike writing. Wow. It really looks like a child. <laughs> T and T and D immediately. G has a descender. All these will allow you to create outstanding flourishing. <laughs> now. So first of all, with the O, one of my favorite is to create Okay. I like this letter O a lot. Okay, out, because the T, you can either do this like a full pressure stroke, or you could have done this little loop, and later we add the crossbar like that. But because I'm writing more, a little, slightly more formal in a way, outstanding. I might consider crossing all of them together. Now, because if I'm thinking uh, ahead, this is a crossbar that I'm going to connect them. The D will have a big empty space here. Uh, either I can make a loop to create something, do something here. If you're uncertain, you can always do something like that as well because it gives you a chance to add the flourishing afterwards. Okay, and the G, I make it more dramatic. Fill up a lot of the space here. Now, when I'm moving, thinking about the parallel spacing. Okay, now I'm gonna. I'm not sure if I bring it and this is quite a long distance. If they're closer together, I probably coming up and then sweep all the way uh, like that. But because it's so long, <laughs> so far away from each other, it won't look nice because the, the S curve is too long. Now what I would do is I will probably come up here. Keep it simple first, okay? Because I can still play around with this possibility on the top. Now, I also should have been writing with more empty space on top so I can see this better. I can cross it. Wow, the ink is still wet there. A little bit, it poured a little bit. Now, paper fiber. 
can you see tiny bit of paper fiber here oops okay remove it immediately because otherwise it's going to make your hairline a little bit thicker okay now i can make the loop but i don't really want anything i could have done this loop but i don't want to because there is something here i want to fill up on this side so maybe i'll do and i also have to think about the dot as well so i'm gonna do this Okay, and then I will add the dot, either a tick mark, which kind of matches this kind of angle. You can intentionally, sorry, with the T in the way. Okay, now all this could have been do better, but because this writing on the spot, now I'm going to sharpen the things, like if I'm touching up this, let's see, I will draw a 7. Make sure you don't have a lot of ink on the back, okay? i make this sharper by drawing a 7. Tiny bit. I'll make this dot a little bit. Like that, so this matches with this and that, as in it echoes. Now, with this, draw it. Okay. this is not very smooth. Sometimes, my same method, but I don't really want to cover it so much because it's meant to be like um, hairline when you come down. But Just a tiny bit. I think that's pretty much the max I would do. Yeah. Kind of regretted it, but like that, outstanding. Now, I want to show you the other thinking I was do, uh, in my head when I said bring it over. Now, my immediate thinking is if I do the same concept but if I'm doing maybe Spencer It is I have to I have to change my mind. I'm writing too big for this pens, the lowercase. Let me try one more time. Playing. It's still quite far, huh? But what I'm trying to do is I oh, bring it over. But you see what I meant now. It's this is too long. It doesn't work. Yeah. If it's a shorter word, it would look pretty. Okay. Now I was actually writing to show you that, but forget about it. I'm sorry. But in a in a in a shorter word, it will work quite lovely. You know, quite nicely. Okay. So I guess that was hopefully helpful. Let me take out the camera. So this is what 
I just wrote again. If you want to fix anything, you know, add more flourishing, feel more things, you can keep playing. You can think about the uh, outstanding the A, how you can extend it, and do like flourishing like that. How you can maybe cross them together using pencils really help to do the design. And um, if you run out of ideas. Always, 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 always refer back to um, some uh, textbook for studying. This is one of my absolute favorite templates. Um, home instructor in penmanship. It's just so. It's just such a good book, um, like things like that, and I copy and copy. By. Copying, you build up that muscle mem memory, All right? Yeah, it's just so fun to look at. This is so cool, right? It just it's like um the penman drop his eyelashes like a really thick one, <laughs> but it is actually a shade. Okay, sorry for being silly. Now, quickly go through, see if you have any questions. Um, I, I really appreciate that you guys joined me this evening. Um, and I hope wherever you are in the world, stay calm, stay home. Um, I think definitely things are getting better. Well, Hong Kong, we have a lot less uh, cases. I think currently it's definitely single digit, which is great. But we're just praying for everywhere in the world is more uh, peaceful, more calm. Uh, and if you uh, have worries, definitely try out writing calligraphy, try out painting, doing some crafty stuff help to uh, pass the time and, you know, help you to relax your body. It really does that to me. And um, I'm going to do, because uh, this is the end of this month, but next month I'm going to kickstart um, in May. Wow, time flies. It's May already, I think. We're on the end of April. Now we're gonna do uh, the capitals alphabet. We're gonna have A to Z. Um, I'm gonna show everyone the very traditional way of writing and gross script. Um, the first one will be on the 6th of May, which is a Wednesday night. Uh, I will put this all schedule onto my Instagram and you can just check it out. So we're gonna start with capital letters first. A little bit tricky, we we'll tackle the difficult one um, we do about four capitals in one uh, one life story uh, sorry life demo and then in June we're gonna move on to lower cases and these are already available for download if you want uh, they're on my website here sorry I'm promoting myself but we do spend a lot of time uh, making this into like uh, AI which is an illustrator to keep all the lines very sharp to show you. What is the name of the book? The name of the book, I'll bring it back. Yes. We sell this as well, but if you're based in America or international, I suggest you to find your local um, local art shop or calligraphy shop. This is Tambling, T-A-M-B-L-Y. Possibly S home instructor penmanship. It's quite a small book, so my hand is about this size. You can take a screenshot. Yep, and then there you go. One of my favorite. Okay, so I think there wasn't any question. If I missed anything, you can text me privately. I am going to do the Jonathan word again, and I will send it to you. Okay. Um. Thank you. Have a great long weekend in Hong Kong. We'll see you next month. Bye-bye. Nice.